Twix by Roald Dahl. Part one. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big a job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So I want to know this. How often do all these hairy faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week, like us on Sunday nights? And do they shampoo it? Do they use a hairdryer? Do they rub hair tonic in to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber? To have their hairy faces cut and trimmed, or do they do it themselves? in front of the bathroom mirror, mirror with nail scissors. I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which you probably will be as soon as you step out onto the street, maybe you'll look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. Mr Twit. Mr Twit was one of these very hairy faced men. The whole of his face except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose were covered with thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr Twit felt like this hairless made him look terrifically wise and grand, but in truth he was neither of these things. Mr Twit was a twit. He was born a twit and now at the age of 60 he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr Twit's face didn't grow smooth and matted as it does on most hairy faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr Twit wash this bristly nail brushly face of his? The answer is never. Not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it's not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face that is a very different matter Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in among the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfasts and lunches and stuffers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or on his sleeve while he was eating. But if you look closely, not that you ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish and chips and minced chicken livers, all the other disgusting things Mr Twit liked to eat. If you look closer, hold your noses ladies and gentlemen, if you peered deep into the moustachey bristles sticking out over his upper lip, you'll probably see much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hands. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or a mouldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Because of all this, Mr Twit never really went hungry by sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth. He would, was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. Mrs Twit. Mrs Twit was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a pity she didn't, because that at any rate would have hidden some of her fearful ugliness. Take a look at her. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs Twit wasn't born ugly. She had quite a nice face when she was young. The ugliness had grown up upon her year by year as she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. 
a person has ugly thoughts, it begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier until it gets so ugly you could hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and double chin and stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs Twit's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that this because she had warts grown on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason was she, she carried a stick was so that it could, she could hit things with it, like dogs and cats and small children. And then there was the glass eye. Mrs Twit had a glass eye that was always looking the other way. The glass eye. You can play a lot of tricks with the glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again. Any time you like. You can bet your life Mrs Twit knew all the tricks. One morning she took out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr Twit sat there drinking the beer slowly. The froth made a white ring on the hairs around his mouth. He wiped the white froth onto his sleeve and wiped his sleeve on his trousers. You're plotting something, Mrs Twit said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see that she had taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs Twit was right. Mr Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think of a really nasty trick he could play on his wife that day. You'd better be careful, Mrs Twit said, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr Twit said. He went on drinking his beer and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman. Suddenly, a Mr Twit tipped the last drop of beer down his throat, he caught sight of Mrs Twit's awful glass eye staring at, up at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. I told you I was watching you, cackled Mrs Twit. I've got eyes everywhere. You better be careful. See you next time for the next part.